Hey everybody, so I want to go ahead and share with you guys uh, some feedback I got from DNEG. I want to make it very clear that you guys kind of listen to this to realize that I am not in any way uh, kind of like putting a studio on a pedestal and saying dance, you know, get, you know, send some scripts out you. Um, I really just wanted to put this email out and kind of shoot for the stars with the DNEG. A lot of responses you're going to hear is what I was expecting. But call me optimistic, I just really thought there would be a possibility of some old, tired, worn-out script that some studio would care less about, whether it be a commercial or even just a clip from an old movie that nobody cares about. And that I thought that by putting an email out with DNEG wasn't meant to sort of demonize that studio if they don't deliver, but to the realization it's going to take more than one person sitting at a desk, possibly two or three, that might collaborate together and see this to uh, see this kind of like executed where the release of assets and release from a film studio you know that's a lot of work obviously so kind of getting the word out from people that who you know probably use my website before for you know trying to learn nuke at the beginning and again trying to get some kind of like uh, feedback but again a lot of what I'm gonna read to you is what I've expected to hear Again, this is this is not really benefiting me, with the exception of trying to help the community. If anything, it's making me probably, <laughs> you know, look like 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 uh, you know, here we are taking these you know studios to task and say, get 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 me some assets, you know, um, you know. If anything, it'll probably hurt hurt the uh, uh, my career. Uh, but I don't want I, that's not my intentions, obviously, and not to tr trash talk any studio for not delivering. But it's important to kind of read this because it kind of gives you, there's some really great insights into this, this, con this uh, email. Again, I blacked out stuff that would kind of give away who this person is. So I just figured I'd go ahead and just kind of share it. So I said, hi, Matt, I know that you are, I know who you are and saw your video about requesting nuke scripts from studios and then targeting DNEG Montreal. I do appreciate your work and shared it whenever I felt it would benefit. Often it combines with videos uh, from Tony Lyons, Ben McEwen, Conrad Olson, comp layer Josh Parks, and Sebastian Trout, Small World. I could be wrong, but I doubt you will get a response from DNEG. Here's my personal guessing as to why. Good for publicity. DNEG already has great publicity. Many awards, awesome projects, top talents in house and clawing at the door, rapidly expanding, extensive internal tools and training, etc. You reached out to them first undoubtedly for reasons related to the above. Yes, I basically did it because it was like, in my eyes, <clears throat> as far as what I hear from people that have worked at DNAG, I'm sure some will disagree, but uh, it's a great place to work. Uh, they're really great to their employees. They have great training. It's super exciting and awesome to work at a studio. <clears throat> um, as commentators point out in this video, the biggest obstacle is less about permissions from VFX houses and more about permissions from the film studio. If I told you we had trouble getting permission to use nuke scripts, plates, assets for private and secure internal training, then imagine how hard it would be to get permission for something public. Plus, you'd have internal gizmos and tools break or ear in the scripts, uh, if, you know, to approve for publicity. I was well aware of this. That's why I kind of offered the reality of like, what if I took it and reconstituted it? If there was AOVs in there, uh, if there were light passes, if there was anything we could use to scrap if we have to and uh, allow for as much as we could gleam from scripts uh, outside of the fact that they would be attached through many other assets. It sounds like quite a reverse engineering feat, but I was up to the I, w I was up to try it out. I was like to say, hey, what if we I'm not saying what if you know if I if I load this stuff up and half of it breaks, my intentions were to take it and to kind of rewire it and get as much as we could from what was the protocol workflow that was being used in the studio. This is so, you know, uh, <laughs> I, w I don't know if it was desperate or whatever, but I just thought it'd be a worth it worth doing. And again, I like to quote, uh, I was just listening to an interview with uh, James Cameron. He's just going around talking about Avatar, Way of the Water. Uh, he said, everything in his life, he always would say, let's give it a try. It, you know, uh, and everyone would say, no, 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 ain't going to work. He would say, let's just try. Let's just try and see what happens. So again, I'm shooting for this big studio, but believe me, I was well aware that this is going to probably, we're going to probably kind of segue this into seeing if there are, you know, uh, 
smaller studios. And obviously he talks about that a little bit later here. Three, no one has enough time or interest. Recruiters are busy f filtering through applications. Heads of department supervisors are focusing on meeting client demands and retaining upskilled current talent. This, does leave, this doesn't leave a lot of room for potential hires who are lacking skills. Well, yeah, obviously. So uh, for studios like ILM, DNEG, Weta, Framestore, and Sony, generally rely on people going to school or self-study to get, the, get into smaller studios, building experience and knowledge, and then getting good enough to join. Only the shining stars or lucky ones can bypass this through internships and similar opportunities that include training. So here becomes again that kind of, kind of like a, I don't know what you want to call it, a conundrum where it's like, well, I to get experience you need experience to get, to get you know experience you get experience. So you basically, you know, what am I what am I trying to do at the lower level YouTube intro slash intermediate level is trying to see if we can broaden the scope of education in those that are just trying to learn what they can to kind of move on to you know get into a small studio and so forth so again it's all these things i was obviously well aware of i even addressed them in the video themselves smaller studios or ones that do commercials would be far more reasonable bet very true they are more likely to work with clients who would value the publicity have accessible archive data that wasn't overwritten a simple enough pipeline to resemble vanilla nuke and more of a need Willingness to upskill the overall talent pool, helping their competitors in the process. I have seen very advanced scripts at s small studios uh, uh, than big studios. Don't judge a book by its cover. True. Um, again, I wasn't trying to like hold back against smaller studios. I knew inevitably uh, it would be probably the small studios that would come to the rescue, uh, that would contribute. Um, and again, benefiting them, and again, again, benefiting the the big five, you know, VFX houses, you know. But again, I thought I'd just give it a shot. Okay. So anyway. So again, like I said, I'm getting a lot of heat for like going straight to to, to DNEG and be like, why don't you try these smaller studios and so forth? And it's just like I figured I'd just try it out. You choose DNEG Montreal first, which was an odd choice to me. DNEG started in London, so by ignoring headquarters. You may have burned some bridges. You mentioned commercials and DNEG's Canada location don't do commercials, only big film, TV, and streaming projects. DNEG Vancouver is also older than Montreal. I couldn't help but get the general impression from both of your videos that this was a bit of a random choice and that you would be hitting up every big studio with the same generic request. Nobody likes generic requests, which is why we encourage students to write personalized cover letters and research each studio. Uh, I did do the research on the studio, and what I did know about DNEG was uh, specifically Montreal. And the reason for me choosing DNEG Montreal versus what I obviously knew was the headquarters and a lot busier studios, the Vancouver and London office, was because I figured maybe this is too much of a kind of a lackadaisical guess, but I would just say that Montreal was a newer studio, uh, newer people there, and because of that, I thought maybe there was a possibility that it would be less regimented and the possibility of maybe having more bandwidth to take on this sort of request. That is the reason. So I was aware that the studio, that this was not the, the, you know, the flagship studio. And the reason why I specifically chose this studio was not out of just generalization, what, but it was because of the possibility in the back of my mind that they would have the bandwidth to actually take on this request, uh, or at least out of the major, you know. Eight, so my suggestion is to personalize your request to smaller studios. Alternatively, you got comp skills, and it's a booming market right now. If you're willing to relocate, you can most likely land a job in a major VFX studio. Then you could work on big comps and use the knowledge for future YouTube videos. Hope this helps. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. So again, special thanks to the person who will remain nameless? Who sent this out? Uh, they didn't have to. They didn't have to respond and so forth. But um, I, again, it's it, it's the obvious reality that I would would have put out as far as like what what would happen. So as we kind of move forward, we'll have to put DNEG aside here. 
again, thanks for getting reaching out to us. And we'll just shoot for a smaller studios. If you are a smaller studio, you're out there watching, you appreciated some of the training that a lot of, not just me, but these other contributors that he spoke about, if you're interested in the possibility of sharing something that won't compromise your studio or get you in trouble with the studios as far as releasing footage, and again, it can be super old footage, whatever, um, I am willing to take the footage for free to reconstitute it. If there's bugs, if there's errors, if there's something that you know you guys can't release because of proprietary scripting or whatever, I'll weave it out of the actual comp if I can and use whatever I can to gleam footage. You know, to be quite honest, people would be happy enough to get footage that is just, you know, rendered footage with AOVs and all this and see if they can kind of, that, that to me is a benefit, just to even just get the raw, you know, EXRs or whatever, uh, you know, that has all the different render passes, fiddle around with them, you know, try to put the get of the comp over the plate. I mean, even that to me is something that would be incredibly beneficial. Again, it, this, there, there's, there's all the legalities and permissions and inner competitions between studios that prevents all of this. So I get it, I get it, I get it. But I do believe there's going to be a demand for really good com compositors soon. And the only way to really kind of remedy that is at the bottom level of education that's more accessible to be um, just more advanced and I get get more of a variety as opposed to just the intro stuff I constantly see. Uh, again, I'm going to continue to try to get uh, better education and continue to put artists out and get more of the most advanced stuff out there possible to you guys. So, cheers. <laughs>